Hey, it's Harker from Play. Today I'm going to show you how you can add scroll effects to your stacks in Play. And through that, I'll show you how you can test out 10 to even 20 different animation types in just a matter of minutes. That's how easy it is to do it in Play. So let's dive in. First, I'm going to grab the stack that's on my page that has several images within it. And then I'm going to go to the element settings. So this is the stack element settings right here. Underneath this divider, there's three properties, and these all relate to scrolling. We're going to go ahead and ignore scrolling and paging for now, but I'll link a video. I'll, I'll link the video that talks about both of those in the description. So now we're going to focus on effects. So you can see right now there's no scroll effects. It just scrolls very normally, but we have seven different scroll effects that are built in super easy to use. All you have to do is slide through this effect slider to use them. So first we have scale and this will scale objects in and out of the view. Next we have fade. This will fade in objects in and out. Scale and fade, blur, cover flow, cover flow inverted. So this is just the opposite of cover flow and then pile. So we have a ton of different options there. You can choose from super easy, but if one of those is not quite to your liking or you want to start from scratch and create your own custom scroll effect, it's easy to do and play. You're just going to click on the right side of this effects property and it's going to open this pop up. So the way you're going to create the custom scroll effect is to use the values here at the bottom of this pop-up. And so you can add in the blur values, move values, rotate, scale, and opacity to create an effect that you'd like. So maybe we'll add a little bit of blur. Um, maybe we'll move it in the Y direction a couple points. Maybe we'll scale something down a little bit. And now you can see that that new scroll effect that I just created by changing those properties around that works perfectly right here. So now I can also, you know, maybe I want it to move more in the Y direction, maybe even more in the Y direction, maybe in the negative Y direction. So you can see how easy it is to super, super quickly test all these scroll effects. This scroll effect looks good for now. And I have all those values and you can see that they're happening as you move in and as you move out of the screen. And that's because we have mirror animations turned on right now. So like I said, let me just demonstrate that. So as an object comes into view, it scales up and has that blur. And then also when it leaves view, it scales up and has that blur. So that's because we have mirror animation turned on. But if I turn that property off, it's going to give me two values for when an object is coming, like where they're going to, and then also from values, which is where that object is coming from. So this is creating two different animations, one for moving in, one for moving out. So I can change this around. Maybe the two values should have no blur and they also don't move in, but maybe they rotate a little bit. So now you can see as we are going to this object, it's going to rotate. It's not going to blur. That's where it's going to. And then the from values are still having that scale up and the blur. So you can see it looks different as it comes in and out. And that's super easy to customize with play. And again, I can turn mirror animations off to remove that. So now I'm going to take it back up to the top of this pop-up and talk about the trigger. So this can happen from two places. You want to either trigger it from the focal point, which in this case is on the left, but I can make that the center. So that means the center of each object is the focal point, and that is when the animation will be finished. Or you can choose to do it from in view. And so this is when the object starts to become in view. So you can see the difference between these. This is what in view looks like. And this is what from focal point looks like. So you can see this is just a segmented control that we're switching between the two, but it makes a pretty massive difference in how the effect looks on your phone. You can also adjust when you have that focal point chosen. You can choose whether you want it to be on the left, which again looks a little bit different, center, which we just showed, or on the right. And all of these look a little different and it's super easy to play around to see what you like in here. Next, we have the trigger area, and this is going to determine how much space your animation has to complete. So right now it's 100%, and so it has the entire stretch of the width of our screen to finish the animation. But I can also reduce that, and so you can see here, if I set it to 50%, we have this green box. It's on macOS. It shows you what the current trigger area is now. So you can see that the animation is going to happen a lot faster than it did before when we had 100% because it needs to finish in less time now than it did before. And you could also try this out in a more extreme. So if you have like 10%, you can see how fast these are all happening here. But I'm gonna move the trigger area back up to something that's a bit more reasonable, like 80%. You can see 
that looks decent there. And then next we can talk about clamping values. So when you clamp values, when it's turned on, that means that the animation is going to stop once you've exited the trigger area. So you can see everything as it's animating in and as it's animating out, once it, like, once it passes that trigger area, that 80%, it's going to stop moving. So you can see static and then it tilts in and then it's, there we hit the edge of the trigger area and then it's static again as it goes out. In just a few minutes, I've tested all seven of the scroll effects that we have built in in play, as well as tried 10 different custom variations. It's super easy to do and it's fun. Looking forward to seeing what you create with scroll effects in play.